Hey, Michelle. Uh, last time we were chatting, you started talking about something which I thought was really, really interesting, which is this idea of learned helplessness in the context of helping organizations to move from state A to state B. Um, and it was le learned helplessness in the context of resistance to change. Um, and uh, what we wanted to do was to um, talk about that and record it at the same time, because we felt that some of these ideas, um, it, we, we're interested basically in hearing what others have to say about this. And hopefully also it is something that will help them um, as they are helping others to, to progress um, in whatever area they're progressing in. Do you want to cover a little bit then, Michelle, um, what what we mean by learned helplessness, um, these these great psychological concepts that we have here? Now, fantastic. Now, as you remember, we talked and uh, learned helplessness is, is based on a research from Marty Seligman that around 20 years ago, more or less, discovered that in, in different group, groups of dogs. So make it, to make the story short, they put different groups of dogs in different conditions, similar conditions, but the diff with, slight, with some differences. And one of those groups was in a situation where for a certain time period, whatever they were doing in that situation, they could not change the state they were in. So they were in a cage, uh, and, then, and then there was electric shock sent to them, and, and then they could do whatever they they will do. There was no no way to get out of having those electric shocks. And uh, these these dogs eventually learned that there was nothing to be done. Whatever action you are doing, at least in that limited time period, will not change their, their states. And and uh, one of the findings was that when they get into that state. It's very difficult to move the dogs and humans, because then, then they're replicated with humans, not, not with electric shocks, I, I hope. <laughs> That's, that, 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 that when they are in that situation, it's very difficult that these uh, individuals, dogs, uh, will, will really uh, try to move from that state or try to do something to move from that state of desperation, let's say. And that is called learner helplessness. And in and in this example, which which is a little bit worrying to those of us who who have dogs, as you can imagine. But Absolutely. in the uh, from a scientific perspective, in this example, what would happen is that if they pressed a lever or if they did an action, it would stop the it would it would stop the shocks. It would stop the the thing. But what they realized, they felt that they there was nothing to do, and that even doing that was not going to help. Absolutely. In the first phase, even pressing the button, there was not not having any difference because because that is that is a period of time. Then after a period of time, they could have pressed the button or press pressed the lever, and then the shock would have been stopped. But they learned that whatever they do will not make any difference. So and that is really related to a, a, a certain period of time. Now. Uh, honestly, I think that you have seen it too. We, we we both have seen it in a lot of organizations that we can see pretty similar behaviors. Different degrees, people that are in an organization and say, okay, this is the way things are working here. There will never be a way to change them uh, uh, or change the others to others that are a little bit more optimistic. I think that, that there are degrees of learned helplessness. Uh, or oh, maybe it is not called learned helplessness. So the, 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 the worst degree is where people really do not see that, uh, that change is possible. And then there are degrees of, degrees of people that are very skeptical about things that uh, they can do to change things. Now, change things usually is changing things for the better. If I remember, and I'm sure you have a lot of examples about that too. I have one of the best examples that comes from my career. Or let's say I was in Mexico running the transformation of a big insurance company there. And uh, and, and then, then when we found that one of the actions that the group of people, there were around 40, 45 people in the department of the organization could do, was dealing uh, with the Mexican government that was not not really uh, helping them to release uh, some cars. So they were 
having cars, they were waiting for documents from the Mexican governments, but this wasn't always too late. And the common answer to that, okay, we should do something about that. The common answer to everyone, of everyone is this is impossible. We will never be able to do anything about that. That is because we have tried it before. It has not worked. So through coaching, we, we and me and my team convinced them to do that. And guess what? Of all the actions that they had to do to move from a, to a better state, that was the fastest action to implement. Because the moment they went and this, discussing this with the Mexican government and all the other insurances, everyone was complaining about the same problem that the documents were coming in too late from the government. So there was a first bad reaction, but after really, I think it was two or three months, they solved, they helped solving the problem for all the fellow insurance in Mexico. Right. And that was a huge difference in their performance because just before that, they were waiting for those documents and having cars and parking uh, lots for years, not being able to resell them when they were able to recollect them from a total loss. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the most uh, interesting stories that I have related to learned helplessness, something that everyone actually believed it can never be done. And mm -hmm. within three months, they could do it and they changed the whole industry. So they, they solved that problem Fantastic. for the whole industry. Fantastic. And within that, I, I remember when you were when you were describing the the scientific example, you said that the way you actually solve the problem or the way you actually help the the dogs big um, move away from this helplessness is by literally physically moving them and physically showing them that now this would the solution is there. And I'm, sus and I'm suspecting that there is an equivalent in your story with um, that you just described. Absolutely, the equivalent. At that time, I didn't know that uh, anything about learned helplessness. So it, I was lucky. So let's say lucky in all the things that we are doing. And, and if I remember what we were doing, there were two factors. Luckily, at that time, I had I had a fantastic team that had built. So there were four people together. So each. Each one of the guys working with me and working for me at the time I was head of the transformation um, was coaching at least a manager and 10 people there. And there was one fantastic guy with me that was coaching the director. So it was really physically there. Have you done that? Let's do it together. So moving that guy. So that was the first element, really that, that element of coaching, but really very, very near everyday coaching with those guys. And the other element was that even if that director that should have been the guy moving everything was very skeptical of everything, seeing that the other guys that were working for him, all the reporters were running so fast to try, at least try to solve something because their coaches were pushing to do that. Uh, he said, okay, I cannot, I cannot stand behind. I have to start running myself. To, and he was, and he told me like, the, the funny fact that he told me that almost one year after we did the transformation, he just I have to confess, <laughs> if, if you were only coaching me and I, I will not have seen the other guys running and really mm -hmm. trying to do things, and maybe I will not have done anything. Mm -hmm. and, so that and combination I, of factors was was was, was huge. No, that, that that's brilliant. I mean, it, because it it. For, for me, I think I think immediately about this whole idea of providing the explanation of what what needs to happen, and then you get resistance, obviously, or whatever. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you just explain something, and people are ready for that new idea. But so often we need to move to evidence quickly, and and evidence can take a number of different shapes. It can be external evidence that we bring in, or it could be um, a sometimes. But sometimes we need internal evidence. We need our own colleagues to change in order for us to realize that we can change too it's i always say you know it's it's easy for me to think of you know um usain usain bolt well he can he can win you know the the 100 meters because he's usain bolt that's nothing for me but if the guy who i went to school with is doing something and i know that you know when we were in school we were you know both idiots and now he's doing something amazing i'm thinking now I have no excuses left. <laughs> no, it sounds like 
it sounds like this is happening here. But of course, we th coaching is such a powerful um, way of helping people because and if it's and if it's continuous coaching, you can as the coach, you can then spot what is getting in the way of helping that person get to the next phase. In, in this case, it was the example that you gave. Um, something I like to use, and I wonder if you do the same, is I love to use games and exercises where we take away the fear of failure um, and we allow people to experience the new way of thinking and working. Um, and then we help connect the dots between the game and their, their daily activities. Absolutely, that is something that we have in common. If you remember, we did some games together at uh, what is today the part of the London Stock Exchange. Yes. But you remember some of those games that we were playing together that that were people, we were just explaining what the difference between two games, between command and control, command and control, and what we consider more agile or a different kind of leadership. Let's, yeah. let's yeah. get that agile that, yes. out of the loop from the moment. And just by physically experiencing that, you could see really yes. just a different, different light in the eyes of everyone. Mm -hmm. They were actually understanding the difference between yes. the two things exactly. and, 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 and then, then relate to what they were not doing right. And why, when they were having certain behaviors, yes. they could not get... The what they wanted. I think you have just released a video speaking about that. And yes. That is, uh, can you remember the, the, the name of the video? That the, you were um, I've, I've, I've called it um, Agile Lessons from Churchill's Secret Agents, I think. Is that the one with the, yeah, um, yeah. the, the pond exercise? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> that, that, that we should relate to that video because that, that is precisely the kind of game that can help, that will help people to understand. Yeah. What, what is the difference between two leadership styles from inside, emotionally? You need to un understand it not only with your brain, but you need to understand it emotionally. Yeah. I remember that in, in that video, the people that were judging the different teams were not really <laughs> understanding what was going on, no. but that can happen. That's why you need some coaches that, that, or, that know what they are talking about. Exactly. The, the other thing that, I, that I, f I find exciting about all of this um, is that it often doesn't need a very heavy handed or expensive um, approach to to help organizations to change radically. Um, in your example, you talked about that 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 you just gave us. You talked about the fact there were five or six people who were helping the entire you know the entire transformation happen. Um, and and so often we I think part of our learned helplessness, if I if I can use that phrase is that we we collectively have been through so many transformations all our lives you know now at the age of 56 i mean i'll, I'll have to go back and count how many times in the different organizations that i've worked for <laughs> where where we've been transformed um sometimes you know once a year or something so you just get that fatigue and you go it, it doesn't make any difference because we always end up in the same place mm -hmm. um, and we need and and so often i think a lot of organizations are not now trying to do that anymore because it's just too expensive. I mean, you're just spending so much money on something that is not actually delivering an outcome, um, whereas what you're describing just makes sense. But I think me and you, correct me if I'm wrong, we are not of the styles bring in a big bunch of big number of consultants into a company and help them with the high fees to do something. Even in that case, I was the, I was running the the, the 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 transformation from inside. So there was were not. I will not name the, the big consulting firms that are doing that. They are bringing all those fifty people inside with very high rates to and then and then you you have change from outside. Yes. I my opinion and you train the guys inside. You yes. help the guys. Exactly. Those four or five guys that were with me. They were just uh, internal guys, guys from the insurance that I have trained to be consultants or agents of change. Brilliant. They helped number of other uh, departments of the company to do that, and now today they are running the show because they are they became directors within that company. So the, the 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 same guy, and that is what Toyota has done in the beginning. Toyota in their transformations and their transformation, well, at least that in their history, because they are <laughs> they are already transformed. They have done it in the same way exactly. many, many times. So other companies, you 
Mm. And, you, and you I think knowledge from outside, but you have to build your capacity inside. Exactly. And that is extremely less costly actually, than all the other approaches from being just, consultant. What, you, what you said there just reminds me of two two great stories. The, the first one is the story that um, many of us know, the NUMI, N-U-M-M-I story, the Fermont factory, um, the car factory that was the worst performing factory. And within six months of Toyota coming in, it became the best performing factory with the same people <laughs> yeah. who were with the same people who were, you know, causing Absolutely. all sorts of a ruckus were now actually were now the best performing people and again sort of so they dealt with learned helplessness there through just culture they just basically said this is how we do things and i think of internal in terms of internal change i you also made me think of um dave marquet in his story turn the ship around where he in he as one man inside the submarine basically created the environment um, where everybody changed. And the, and I love li still now listening to the stories of what's happened to many of those people since um, since he left. And so they've gone on to do great things as well because he created that leader leader model, the intent based um, leadership model. So that, that just to remind me as you were talking about the things yeah. that happen, we, we help people change internally and they change permanently right um, because as soon as you take the ch agent of change away the change often stops if it's not if if we haven't absolutely. left a legacy absolutely and a lot of people will remain in the company and continue to change that and a lot of those guys that have trained went to other companies and they brought change in other companies i can remember another example one of the uh, other nice uh, nice transformation that i did was with the bank federal bank in seattle and those guys i will not tell the story it's a, it's a little bit long anyway it was a team of 14 people plus another 20 in india and when i arrived they were uh, like uh, there they were not able to take any they were not able to take any holidays and actually i didn't take any holidays for the the four for the three years prior my arrival there because this was really the team keeping the bank up and running. And then uh, first day I arrive, a guy say, tells me, okay, a lot of guys with your background came here and we never changed anything. So there were other consultants there. So, okay, why should we think, even think that you can help us? I say, I am different, believe me. <laughs> no, but the last guy had written a book. I have not written any book, <laughs> but believe me, you will change. Okay, long story short, they became within a year the best performing department of all the sister federal banks, federal loan loan banks in the US. Right. And they kept improving for the next four or five years. Then I met a guy that was the project manager at the time that made a big career in, uh, in the bank and outside of the bank in the consulting firm that he was working for. And they t told me, look, now we just closed the team. I say, okay, bad. Oh, so I, I, well, after four or five years, uh, change stops. No, they were so good that their model, uh, they were teaching, the original team were teaching their model of working to the team that will take over because the banks were merging. So they were asked to do that. And on top of their salary, they got a big bonus to stay there and teach that. And then they moved to other places. Amazing. But even funnier thing, six months after that, one of the guys that was the architect, architect that was really running the show six, seven, eight years earlier, and that could not take any holiday, and he, he told me, "You saved my life." And he said, you saved my life. See, now I am in another bank. I have the same problem as the seven years before. How do I change it? So he started to change himself in the other bank, and yes. so and that is, and I'm sure it happened to you a lot of times. Yes. Yes. So we we help create leaders, and that 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 is also the fun the fun and the rewarding part. Of it, it is it is it is so rewarding when that happens. I've uh, uh, been been working with some people recently, and um, I'm not not working them at, at the moment, but I'm still watching on LinkedIn their successes, um, and they are now doing it all internally, and they are actually delivering you know great things and and taking what we showed them and developing that on throughout their organization which is so exciting when that happens it's um it's it's really really cool so um there is a way to deal then with learned helplessness is what we know um and there is a a, a, a very easy approach to it 
But what we need is we need the evidence. We need somebody who can who has that experience. And we need to be able to show them, um, you know, literally show them physically, mentally and emotionally what is possible and then we'll let them at it. Now, brilliant. Uh, thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. I think we are, we're going to um, hopefully spend some time on on other topics as well, discussing these little things like this that that we um, that we have have time for but um but that was really really interesting thank you for thank you for your passion as well you <laughs> <laughs> thank you alistair that we share the same passion that's why we do it's, nice we do. it's great awesome i know you need to get back to things you've got things on today um i know you're a busy man so um we will we will chat again very soon ciao alistair bye take guys. care